YouTube. Welcome to my channel, Growing, Glowing and Going. My name's Sarah and today is Good Friday and you can see, hopefully you can see, that the sun is shining today. It's given some rain a little bit later but for now it's looking pretty nice. So last, I'm currently sat in my back garden which I showed you in my last video. It's very tropical, it's a little bit Mediterranean Greek. Uh, it's definitely a sun trap in the summer. I've, I've done quite a lot to tidy up, getting ready for spring and summer over these past couple of weeks. What I haven't shown you is I actually have a kind of, can't really call it a garden, it's like a border at the side of my house, which I tend to. And that's a little bit more cottage gardening. But today I am going to start tidying that up, getting that ready for spring. So come and join me while I show you round the side border and show you how, how I'm tidying it up, getting rid of some weeds, chopping some things back. And then I think a little bit later, uh, we will talk about alcohol. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it or the lack thereof so reveal a little bit more about that later but for now come and join me and take a look at my side border and also the cat wants to come outside too so maybe he'll join us so coming out of my back gate some tulips coming through here it's a very messy pot but here is the start of my side border some tulips looking absolutely amazing there. They're those really huge ones. I never planted these ones actually. These are the last the last person that lived here, but they're very much up my street. Got a cool three headed daffodil there. Blowing in the wind. As we go along. Um, this here is a I think it's called a Japanese honeysuckle. It doesn't look like a normal honeysuckle, but it's it's really pretty summer it has pink leaves this is a rambling rose it's pink and it actually looks better than it has done since I've lived here I can't see any black spot on the leaves it's grown really nicely and you can see my peony that started coming through here as well that is I think it's called a ball of beauty it's one of the pink and white ones it's really cute this really needs a cut back. This is verbena. So I'm going to chop this back. You can see it's starting to come through here. Look inside a tulip. Oh, I'm not focusing today. I'm sorry. There we go. Focused. Uh, I moved the hydrangea here maybe last year or the year before. Uh, it's just about coming through. So maybe I'll have some success this year. I've got loads of foxgloves coming through, which is amazing because I love foxgloves. I don't know where they all came from, actually. I've lived here for like two and a half years. And I maybe brought like one or two foxgloves with me. But yeah, you'll be able to see them as we go along. There's more there. This is the rose. Again, it looks super healthy. It was planted by the previous person. But I spent a lot of time chopping it back and trying to train it against this wall so it goes across and up which apparently flowers grow better if uh, I think climbing plants grow better if they they are trained like that more foxgloves not much to see here but this is my grapevine actually uh, there we go we're coming through a little bit so there'll be something to see soon and here is the start of my tulip display so last year I went to Kuchenhof in the Netherlands. Maybe I'll pop a little video here just to show you my inspiration. <clears throat> and in the winter I planted about 250 tulips all the way along here because I wanted this like rainbow display and unfortunately I've chosen some that have come out really early. Um, these are quite early. I had some yellow ones that came out kind of late February down there. These have come out end of March and the others, yeah, there's some more here that, what are you? Okay, I have no idea what this is. This is, that's so weird. Maybe a tulip, who knows? But it looks different to the ones that are planted around, right? So, they've not all come out as expected, but these... 
I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's some cats flying in. There's about, there's probably about 10 cats that live around here. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely loving these tulips. They're beautiful. And here you can see the start of the wisteria. So I'll back up to show you its full size. It goes right along the house. <laughs> Cats are still going. And again, this was planted by the previous person. And I'm not going to lie, it's probably one of the reasons why I was drawn to this house. You can see the buds are starting to open. So again, I'll pop a little photo and a video here of what it looked like in full bloom. And there's a black ladybug. Not focusing. There you go. What a cool dude. So chop that back after it flowered last year and then to chop it back again in January, but I never got around to it. But it'll still be a really cool display. What else have we got? Okay, there's a little more tulips here ready to come up. And all the forget-me-nots have started to come out too. I actually have to get rid of these before they go to seed because otherwise I think the entire thing would just be taken up with forget-me-nots. But they are really pretty. Some cat mint, which the cats absolutely love. Uh, some honeysuckle. I, I keep having to chop that back because it goes so bald at the bottom, but it looks like it's coming quite strongly this year some sedum with last year's flowers still there um which i will chop back today lavender more cat mint honestly i'll come out of my front door and i'll find like an array of cats just sat around here chewing at it and sometimes my cat just loves it if i pinch some of the new growth off and take it in for him um just got like a standard <laughs> kind of waving to us stand of olive tree here which I love just how when olive trees just kind of grow wild and a clematis here which I assume it was about up to here when I first moved in two years ago I assume the point was to make it grow all the way up here which I am letting it do so I didn't chop this back at all after it flowered last year I don't know if it's group A or B or is there a C? I don't remember. I'm just going to let it keep going because it is going from the bottom. So that was your tour of my side border. I'm just going to go and grab some tools now to do some cutting back and some weaving. Trowel. Secateurs. Knee cushion. Container thing to put the weeds in so I don't have to keep coming to the green bin. I thought this was going to be a much more successful extraction, but there's still loads of root left in. I went down really deep, but so they will come back eventually. To be honest, the main weeds I'll be pulling out are the dandelions. They're really, really good early food for a lot of bugs, so I tend not to pull them out too early. But I'll get to the point now where there's a lot more food around for the bugs, so I'm quite happy to pull those out. I will especially pull them out before they start going to seed. The thing is with dandelions, you've got to get as much of the root as you can. This particular one was growing into the pavement, so I'm going to really struggle. But yeah, there's a load of root left in there. So I know that will grow back pretty soon. So this has looked like this since maybe autumn. And I know it looks scruffy, but I don't tend to cut things like this back until about now. Probably should be a little bit later than this, but because we're going away next week, I want to get everything tidy. And um, it provides a little bit of frost protection for the, for the plants around it. It can also provide nice hiding places for bugs in the winter. So if you see a scruffy, scruffy looking garden, it, it could be for those reasons. There's also some really nice seed heads, like the sedum I've left looks actually quite pretty, especially in a winter garden. So that's another reason why you might leave things like this over winter. Generally, I find it annoying when plants grow into the sidewalk because it's not really my responsibility and it looks a little bit scruffy, but how cute is this? They're amazing there, a great person. <laughs> So 
something I'm struggling with a little is what's bulb and what's grass at this time of year. Um, I've just had to pull up this enormous clod of grass, which you might have just seen in the time lapse, but a lot of the bulbs look just like that at the moment. I also can't exactly remember what to do with these wallflowers. Like there's a lot of just dead wood here. If I chop it back, will it come back at the, at the very bottom or will it just chop back? I think I'll chop back the dead wood anyway because it just looks scruffy and I don't think anything's going to grow from that. I think I've made the right decision here. That's all just dead. Coffee break. Hey little buddy. How cute. I don't let snails and slugs in the backyard but I really don't mind them being out here at all. I just realised some information on how much they cut in this plant back might be really helpful. So on this particular plant, I'm finding like the dead or the weak bits and then I'm going along until I find like the first healthy bit of regrowth. So this looks green and then from this leaf node here, it's pretty much dead. So what I'm gonna do is cut back just above that. It's tough to do one handed. Cut back just below that, above that leaf node. <laughs> that was dramatic. So we've still got the healthy leaves here and there's no longer trying to be energy to push to that dead bit. So again, dead, dead, dead. It actually looks not hugely healthy there. So I'm gonna to go to there. There's some plants you can absolutely chop to the ground and they will come back up. There's plants you can chop back really harshly. Like a rose, you can chop that back super harshly and it'll come back absolutely fine. But then there's others, if if you cut into the woody part of the stem, it won't come back. And I will show you an example here actually of lavender. So with lavender, I'm not gonna cut this back at this time of year anyway. I cut it back after flowering. But if I were to cut back into this woody part, the lavender simply would not grow from that woody part. So, and unfortunately it's one of those things where you just need to have the experience to either know or Google it, I guess. Um, here's a really good example of some bulbs that look like grass, as I just mentioned. So it's not perfect, but I'm really happy with this little area now. It's much tidier. The grass is gone. I've sort of some bulbs here, but they'll come back fine next year. Yeah, really happy. Um, took me longer than expected, but I'll still move on and try and at least weed the rest out of the border. Not quite where I thought we'd be, but an awful lot tidier. The tulips are shining. The next meaningful thing I'll do with this probably is just a Chelsea chop in May. Otherwise, pretty much looks after itself. Got some sage planted by the front door and it tends to grow absolutely wild. So I've really chopped it back. So I'm going to dry this out bundle it up, sage the bad vibes out of the house.
pizza on because I totally intended to take you to a garden centre and just make it a really cute like gardening day. But Chris and I went to the Trafford Centre. And the Trafford Centre is not my favourite place at the best of times. But yesterday, of course, was Good Friday. It was a really nice day. So everybody woke up and thought, let's go to the Trafford Centre. Which we did as well, of course. Um, we had to go and get some things for the trip we're going on next week, which I'll tell you a little bit more about next video. But oh my gosh, it was the busiest I have ever seen it. If you know the Trafford Centre, then you'll know like the, the furthest away car parks. We went for the furthest away one first, thinking that will be the least busy and there will be spaces. Totally full up. So ended up driving around like four more car parks. Getting really fed up then already. Eventually just managed to catch someone as they were coming out. But oh, the car parks at the Trafford Centre are, there's so many of them, there's so many spaces. Like, that if that gives you any context and then yeah of course it was really busy when we got in there I just got completely overwhelmed after being there for maybe an hour an hour and a half I'm not gonna lie I had a bit of a meltdown and it was not very nice to Chris I had to come home and I literally just lay down for two hours I, I went to sleep and I felt awful all evening I've woken up today feeling pretty awful now, like I don't look great this morning. I, I almost feel a little bit hungover. So yes, that is what the overstimulation of the Trafford Centre did. So instead, I'm going to go to the garden centre today. It's another lovely day actually, so hopefully that'll be a really nice trip. So I'll take you along to the garden centre today. Also, fun fact. From my first video, I noticed that I was wearing the uh, <laughs> the tie on this dressing gown really high up, and I looked like I was in Pride and Prejudice or something. So that vlog taught me that I need to wear my dressing gown belt a little bit lower down, just to look a little bit more normal. So hopefully that's a touch more flattering than it was in the first video. Serious, this garden centre is the goat. <laughs> Centre, as you can see, and didn't go too wild. I got six plants, some of which are some lettuce that are going in the front. But I actually got myself a bit of a wish list plant. You used to only be able to get these from really specialist nurseries, uh, like tropical ones. But I think because jungle gardening and tropical gardening is much more popular now. Maybe that's why it is in the commercial garden centre. So that's going to go in this night this big pot shortly. But I need to wait because that's got some old soil in it. So I'm going to use some of that up. So I think while we do some potting, I promise we would do a bit of chit chat about alcohol. So I'm going to take that opportunity while I'm kind of distracted to talk to you about it. So I have been what's called mostly dry for almost two years now. And that is coming from somebody who used to love getting smashed, like seriously, loved it. Like, I wouldn't do it frequently, but when I did have a drink, I didn't know when to stop, to be honest. Like, I used to get super smashed, and I wouldn't necessarily really enjoy it. I'd get to the next day and I'd be like, we are not doing that again. Of course, we do it again, but... Um, June 22, I think, the day before my godson's christening, I had a really bad experience with drink. And maybe I'll speak about it a bit more about that at a later date, but not right now. Um, and I really gained to the point and I was like, I am not doing that again. And I actually haven't. Um, I went about a year not drinking completely. 
and then since then I've had a couple of drinks on occasions where I don't have the opportunity to get smashed so if it's like a big night out or something like that I won't have a drink because I know I'll easily be able to get I'm just going to getting smashed um, if I am having a night meal I might have one glass of wine but I'm saying that the last time I had a drink was actually Christmas which is what over three months ago now and that was two glasses of wine so love glasses of sperm I normally get the purple and orange ones but I love these orange ones too um so coming up we have a trip to Costa Rica which is literally next week I'm very excited about it and it's for a friend's wedding and there's going to be like evening drinks the night before the wedding and then a beach party the day after now I think this is actually the first wedding I will have been to being mostly dry and I'm really in two minds about it like a year ago I would have been like I don't drink I'm not drinking but now I'm at the point where I'm a bit like I probably could have a couple of drinks and enjoy myself but also I'm really worried about ruining the rest of the holiday um, you know what if I get really smashed um, and I just don't recover for it. Um, I think maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit and I absolutely could speak to friends and family about this. There's, there's no denying that but for some reason I feel the need to share it with the entire internet. But maybe you have some experience with this. Am I overthinking it? Should I have a couple of drinks and see how it goes? But then I'm at danger of having a couple of drinks. I'll probably get there and I probably just won't worry about it. Like I almost have to have something to worry about before I go on holiday. It's a weird one. exactly where I started off in the same jumper because this is my gardening jumper same beautiful weather um, everything is potted everything's watered in everything's looking really cute I'm really happy with it so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, very much on the growing side of growing glowing and going um, it's a little bit different to the rest of my vlogs but hopefully it was informative um, and you just enjoyed the relaxation of it all um, Thank you so much for watching please do like and subscribe and i will see you next week